What's up, what's up, what's up, YouTube? Hey, man, hit that like and subscribe button if you like these videos. I've been getting a lot of um negative comments about me telling God to sign a petition for 15 years if you decide you want to get in the streets. Hey, why not? Why, why wouldn't you want to sign a petition? If you're going to jump out in the streets and t you know, consciously jumping out there in the streets, why would you want to be, why you want to sign a petition saying that I take 15 years to the dough before I tell on my homie? If, if everybody was to do that, you know, now you know the guys that you witnessed, you call your homies, you know they're kind of solid. Not saying they still ain't going to tell. I'm just trying to make sense out of, you know, because everybody's so concerned about their homie. You know, I done been in the street before. I'm retired. So I'm just trying to give you some advice, you know. I know how I feel to be in the courtroom with somebody pointing the finger at you. That shit ain't cool, you know. It wasn't there one of my homeboys. It was another cat that I don't even fuck with, never even had no dealings with in my life. But the people still have put somebody on the stand and point the finger at you and say you did this and say you did that in a RICO case, you know. So sometimes a person's testimony could just be whatever. But I'm saying like one of your homies, dude that you riding with, that you in the street with, that you actively out here making moves with, where if you out here hustling, wait, you know, whatever, whatever, or you're a robber, stick up kid, or you're just a, you just a shooter, whatever, whatever occupation you have or a scam or whatever occupation you got out here in the streets, I'm asking you, do you really feel 100% confident that your homie who's sitting next to you, if the shit hit the fan and y'all looking at 25 or 30 years for whatever y'all doing, will he stand up for you or what he going to or, or or is he going to tell? You know, I'm just trying to help you guys because a lot of you young guys haven't walked the compound with guys with life sentences. And when you get there and they tell you they got life sentences, they already been there 30. You're like, damn, and they've been here 30 years. And damn, you might just be 25. They done been there longer than you've been alive. See, then this shit hit, then this shit hit, hit a little different then. You see? So that's why I be making statements like that. I be making statements like that to try and educate you guys to let you know, man, the streets ain't what it seemed like. You know, yeah, you can get out here and you making some money, get your name for yourself and have a little reputation out here and uh, 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 whatever, whatever. If you survive that, that's cool. But what if you don't survive? What if they put their hand on you one time and put you away for 35 years? You know, they put the hand on you one time, put you away for 35, 40 years. And if you're a shooter and you got a lot of all these bodies, when they put the hand on you, you're going to put your hands on you, you ain't going to let you out. If you're a hustler, you're out here selling that work. It may put your hand on, you may get 10, you may get 12, you may get 8, you may get 15. But if you got some bodies and shit in play, it's going to be a big, big, big sentence, bro. So I'm just making suggestions, you know. You take what I'm giving you as a suggestion. Meaning if you 15, 16 years old, 17 years old, 18 years old, 19 years old, 20, 21, and you out here in the streets, dude, you got to plan. What's your, what's, your, what's, your end, what's your end game? You know, like playing chess? What is your end game? How do you plan? How you plan on this game to end once you get in it? What, 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 you know, where you see yourself at? You know, that's the whole, that's the whole play. Now, when we jumped out there, I jumped out in the early 80s. So it was still some guys out in the street had businesses and shit going on. And I kind of paid attention to that. I was like a, a street um, scholar. I paid attention to all the old heads, how they were moving, what they were doing. So I could kind of maneuver the way that they was maneuvering. And when one catch a case, I try and figure out what happened, how he caught the case, how this dude caught that case, how this dude caught that case, you know? And I be trying to dodge them type of situations when you're out here in the streets. So a lot of y'all don't even know how to dodge the situation y'all in because everything is brand new. And when the shit hits you, boom, you, you fucked up forever. So that's why I made the statement, hey, let's sign a petition that everybody should be willing to do 15 years minimum mandatory if you are in the streets. If you are saying, I'm going to be in the street life shit, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be an ops. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be a shooter. I'm going to be a hustler. Whatever occupation that come along with being in the streets. That's why I say, well, ask your homie, will it do 15 years to the dope? And if your homie fake and look at you crazy, that letting you know, bro, hey, you might want to put a home on the back burner and probably move a little different way. Sometimes you got to save yourself by saving your homie. Remember what I just said. Sometimes you got to save yourself by saving your homie. Meaning, if you got a homie that you know ain't solid, 
He may be your homie, right? He may love you like a brother. But don't put him in a situation to where he may have to make a decision. Because he's going to have people in the family and people like that talking to him. Just keeping it 1,000. So you kind of know who them people is around you, too. You kind of know who the ones that, because you don't grow up with them, you kind of know what's going to happen. So don't put your homie in a situation where you know he ain't going to be able to take that pressure. And when you re realize that as a, as a homie, don't put him in them type of situations. You know? So remember what I just said. Sometimes you got to say, sometimes you got to save your homie, save yourself. You know? So that's all that is, man. It ain't no um real, um, it ain't no real petition going around. But if y'all want to sign one, sign one. Ask your homie, ask your homie. All your little homies, get it together in the group. All the little homies get together. Y'all say, man, look at it, man. We know we out here doing some shit that may put us in jail. It may it may lead us to prison. We know this. We got to know this. If I go out here and shoot somebody and I got actively dudes, I got a couple of bodies, I know what I'm doing can put me in prison. If I'm out here selling dope, I know what I'm doing can put me in prison. If I'm out here robbing, I know what I'm doing can put me in prison. If I'm out here scamming, I know what I'm doing can put me in prison. So when you consciously know this, once y'all sit down in the group and say, man, okay, if this shit go down because we all moving together, we all doing this. If this shit go down, who going to lay down? And that's how you get your homies, you know, the ability to you know, do some other shit, man. Get a job. Get out the way. Just trying to save you guys because the street's fucked up, bro. Ain't no loyalty out here no more. Shit's sad. And the shit really just a trap to keep sending, sending us back and forth to prison, man. That's all it is. Shit just a trap, man. Big ass trap. Big ass illusion. Big ass illusion, man. It's a way to keep us fucked up over a long course of time. The most powerful thing you can do is educate yourself. And once you understand that shit, man, you know they just want your time, bro. Your time is the most valuable thing you got. So that's why you got to stay free, homie. Psh, make it happen or you capping.